So that's, I think, where I started falling into this period of depression where, like, Juice, between you and me, like, mm -hmm. I grew up on Twitter. Twitter is, like, my humor, okay? Like, that's the type of humor I am, um, or I have, and I used to just exercise it with everyone, like, with teachers, with classmates, with friends, family. Mm -hmm. I was kind of the clown, right? Um, but I stopped being like that when I had to be so serious and constantly have to put on this face. Um, and then I think finally, at towards the end of my senior year, I sat down in my parents' car and I just broke down to them and I said, I need help. I need therapy because I don't think the way that I think about things and the way that I process things and the constant feelings I have of not wanting to be here anymore are normal. And I feel like at this point, if I don't ask for help, I will not be here anymore. Mental Health Monday. 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 Yeah, but that's not fun. Matt and I did talk where like, we might just be the type to keep our circle small. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's, that's okay. perfectly fine. That's okay. That's where joy comes from. Exactly. But, um... Uh, good job, you. Good job, you. Good job, you, Juice. You need to flip more tables, but good job, I, you. Like, I really want to go to one of those, like, smashing rooms, uh -huh. like, where you take a hammer and uh -huh. goggles and, like, smash and then glass send the and, like, mirrors and video to the person stuff. who caused said smashing to happen. But, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mental Health Monday. Here with my homie. Introduce yourself. Let them know who you are. Hello. I am Aparna. Do I give my full government name? It's up to you. If you don't want your government out there, don't give the whole government. Just give them... I'm Aparna J. Yeah, Polari. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay, the whole I was like, thing. might as well go for it. Okay. <laughs> and you've been in therapy. I have, yes. You've done the work. I think so. I think... You are doing the work. I'm not at this moment. I've paused it Look, look it's bit. okay to pause. Breaks are okay. Breaks, Breaks are, are right. okay. Yeah. But there was growth there. There was a lot of growth. More language. More language. More understanding. More understanding. You've applied it. Yes, lots of lessons to you be learned. feel a little bit better or differently I about yourself? I feel like a new person. There you go. That's awareness with the right people and group around yes. you. Because sometimes you got to cut people off. Mm -hmm. maybe not a new person, but who uh -huh. I am authentically inside. Uh -huh. I think that's been uncovered from therapy. That's onions. a more accurate description. Onions. 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 Just onions. Onions. Yes. onions. Well-cooked onions. Maybe some chives. Oh, I do like chives. Yeah. Get and some that's garlic good. cooking in there. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that kind of goes into like what my background is and like mm -hmm. where I am in life right now. So this is where we start. This is where we start. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a little bit about me. Mm -hmm. I am born and raised in Maryland. It was amazing. I loved living there. Yeah. Um, and then I went to University of Maryland. I stayed in state. My parents essentially gave me a choice. They said, we can pay for you to go to Maryland or you can go wherever you want and we will just cover what Maryland would have costed mm -hmm. and you cover, you, you cover the rest and I said that kind of sucks I said what? for undergrad <sighs> I'm, I'm gonna take Maryland Maryland's yeah. a great school I've, I've loved it since I was a kid so mm -hmm. after Maryland I well actually during Maryland I was kind of all around in terms of like what I wanted to do. So I applied as a comp sci major because my dad's a software engineer and it made sense to like follow in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. And then I decided I wanted to go to law school. So I did like public health and I was like pre-law for a little bit. Um, and then seeing how well my brother was doing in med school, I was like, well, I can probably do that. I'm pretty smart too. And I started taking pre-med classes like two years into already starting in Maryland. To give you an idea, most people start those pre-med classes like freshman year, so I had two years to do all of the classes that people do in four. Mm. Um, so I, you know, that's I, a lot. It was extremely difficult. I was extremely depressed, uh, especially in my senior year. Were I was you, like, "Were you depressed?" Or looking oh, back, you realized you were depressed. Oh no, I I knew that mm -hmm. I was depressed because I I just felt this like heaviness on me that wasn't there for the first three years of my time at school. Mm -hmm. So I became president of um, a biology like fraternity in college. It's like a, um, a biology fraternity, like the professional fraternities at Maryland are usually um, made up of many genders. It's not like male fraternity, female sorority like that, like anyone can join. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of, lots of different people, lots of different majors, even though it's all bio. And for some reason, like, things just got so tense when I became president and that made me start to think about my leadership a lot, mm -hmm. right? So 
I feel like you're really big on the word leadership and what that means. Yes, because I am a natural leader and I, I want to be a leader and I, I always want to like, I want to be the best version of myself at all times. And if I want to get to that level, I need to start acting like that now. You ever did a personality test? Uh, I think I'm like an executive personality type, okay. so that checks out. Okay. It's just, I can hear the urge for you to want to be a leader, but I think what I usually question for the person who wants to be a leader is mm -hmm. why do you want to be a leader? That goes back to the whole authority thing. Mm -hmm. I think part of it is because I don't really want to answer to anyone. Okay. That's, so, that's, that's real. That's real. <laughs> I, I realize that's that kind real. of, kind but of early on. that also means you're allowed to make less mistakes than everybody else e too. Exactly. Yeah. Because everyone holds you to those mistakes right because so this goes back to my biology fraternity i'm essentially the face of the organization i'm the chapter president people know me as the leader of it i need to basically be on my toes at all times to make sure that the majority of people are happy mm -hmm. you're not gonna make everyone happy but the majority of people need to be yeah so I had been on this board since I was a sophomore. I started as a service chair, then the next year for the entire year I was a treasurer, and then senior year I rose up to president. It was kind of like a natural progression, although every year we did help hold elections and I was elected to all of those. Mm -hmm. um, so the summer going into my senior year, I wanted to respect everyone's time, so I was basically like, everyone, like, chill for the majority of your summer, but for the people on the board, here are like just a few tasks that you need to get done by the time the school year starts. Yeah. Okay, so how much time does that give you? Three months, you know, maybe mid-May to like mid-August, end of May to end of August, three months. And one of the girls on my board just did not like being told what to do, <laughs> which is crazy because she was elected to that position. Was she a so, contrarian on the low? I, I think so, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Like I respect other people's way of thinking, but don't do it to the, I don't know, don't make everyone else suffer, right, for, yeah. for your lack of work. Um, so throughout the summer, I was checking in with my board members, checking in with myself. Hey, are we getting this done? Um, how are you in this? How much time do you need? Like, do you think you'll get it done by the school year, et cetera? I checked in, I think, twice. Everyone had gotten their tasks done, like, by the first day of school. Mm -hmm. The girl who was our PR chair, who was essentially responsible for being um, another face of the fraternity, making the materials needed to market the fraternity. She did not get her materials done by the first week of school. Ooh. And this is important because as you know, in college, those first look fairs are huge. That's how we get the freshmen, that's how we get the sophomores, mm -hmm. that's how we get the transfer actually students. actually paying attention to. Exactly. Yeah. So I checked in with her multiple times in the summer and then closer to the school year, I checked in with her and she said, stop micromanaging me. I said, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't realize I was doing that. That's on me, I wanna give you more freedom with this as long as it gets on by the beginning of the school year, we're good to go. Because mm -hmm. um, honestly, like I know how it feels to be micromanaged. No one likes that if I didn't think that I was, but if, if I had been, then I wanted mm -hmm. to step back. So we get to our first board meeting, like right before the school year starts, and I say, okay, where are you with this uh, I think it was like a poster board or like something. And she was like, oh, haven't done it yet. And that's when I got a little upset. I said, the first look fair is in like five days. We, like, what do you mean this board isn't done, mm -hmm. right? And she goes, yeah, I, I just, I don't even know if I have time to do it. And I go. This is when she decides to let you know the truth. Yes, yeah. I say, okay. I'll deal with that later, but right now we have to focus on what needs to get done, and that's this board. Yeah. So the people who had just joined the fraternity, they had like rushed and pledged the prior semester, they got the board done, Ooh. right? Yeah. She was upset that they stepped on her toes, despite saying that she might not have gotten it done. So it's like- She's not realistic. Exactly. And yeah. Because of this, though, she spun the situation in a different way. Mm -hmm. She spun further situations in a different way. And um, she was actually uh, impeached or like, because we had a very formal trial. Someone like called to impeach her. Oh my God, there was a trial. <laughs> I know, and we needed like a, like a nine to one vote and it was mm -hmm. like eight to two. So she stayed on the board, yeah. but she made it hell for the rest of the time there. Yeah, So of course, I might as well be petty. And of course, everyone, no, no one ever knows the true side mm -hmm. of the situation because usually the people who 
do the right thing, don't really talk. Also, a lot of people <laughs> don't care as long as it doesn't affect them directly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So there's that too. So you have the people who don't care, and then you have the people who are like, oh, this is all a part of fault. She's like a bad leader, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so because of that... Did you ever speak up for yourself, or did you just keep quiet? I think I... I spoke up for myself during the trial and I said there has actually been kind of like a pattern of verbal abuse between this person and me because she would say like quite literally the meanest things to me over text mm -hmm. um, and I, I like mentioned that and some people did come to me and they were like a partner like you do not seem your normal cheery self like is everything okay and I was like dealing with a lot probably not but yeah so are you a very logistical person or scientific uh, I I would say so, yeah, I, I kind of am type A. I think of things from like a logical perspective, but that was before. Oh, I'm no, extremely no, I different now. I, no, I got you, I got you. Yeah. It's just even in your language now, like sometimes we have to use the insensitive words to get our points across mm -hmm. instead of the logical stuff. So like instead of pattern, it, it might be simpler to say, I called you numerous times, <laughs> right? Oh, I spoke yes. to you, we had conversations in front of everybody, and you told me I was nitpicking. Exactly. People understand that better than pattern, because when they think pattern, sometimes people just go to like Super Mario Brothers, like fighting. <laughs> yeah, so the thing is though, that works when a person is receptive to hearing mm -hmm. that information and yeah. that, that level of like, I guess canonness from you like mm -hmm. if they're okay with the receiving that information then you're good to go but she was not interested in being told that she was wrong in the slightest mm -hmm. so that's i think where i started falling into this period of depression where like juice between you and me like mm -hmm. i grew up on twitter twitter is like my humor okay like that's the type of humor i am um or i have and i used to just exercise it with everyone like with teachers with classmates with friends family mm -hmm. i was kind of the clown right um but i stopped being like that when i had to be so serious and constantly have to put on this face um and then i think finally at towards the end of my senior year i sat down in my parents car and i just broke down to them and i said I need help. I need therapy because I don't think the way that I think about things and the way that I process things and the constant feelings I have of not wanting to be here anymore are normal. And I feel like at this point, if I don't ask for help, I will not be here anymore. And this obviously scared my parents a lot, but being Indian, I think this is true across any sort of foreign family they're not used to this talk about mental health. They don't, they don't really understand it at first. You know, they are kind of just like, there's nothing wrong with you. There's never been anything wrong with you. You're okay. You know, this is just a phase, blah, blah, blah. And it took my brother who is a doctor um, to tell them, hey, like I understand where you guys are coming from, but at the same time, like as a physician, I learned that we have to treat mental health just as any other sickly part of the body, right? If you break your leg, you're gonna go to the ER, you're gonna get, you know, surgery, you know, you're gonna fix your leg. Um, if you have an infection or an illness, you're gonna take antibiotics to fight those infections. So why would you not take any necessary steps to address the problems you have in your mental health? Yeah. Right? And it took my brother saying that to make them understand that Mental health isn't so different from physical health. It's actually, you know, maybe two sides of the same coin. It's all the They're same both thing. both adjacent to each other. And yeah. in just in like Indian history in general, um, have you heard of like Ayurveda? It's like holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. it, it essentially treats your body very comprehensively and it addresses all parts of the whole, right? Not just individual pieces. So using that information and his own insights, my brother was able to show my parents your daughter really needs therapy. My sister really needs therapy. So that's when I started going to therapy for the first time. It was incredible. My therapist was actually very candid in telling me that I had situational depression and that because of where I was with this fraternity, where I was with school, because I was still taking those pre-med classes. I was in like 19 credits a semester. And on top of that, that's I was- classes. Exactly. Yeah. And I was teaching uh, anatomy lab at the same time. I Which was didn't count towards your credits. That's no, separate. yeah, that was separate. It was yeah. literally just like to look good on my resume, but also 
teaching was my favorite thing in the world. Like I, that's a story for another time. Mm -hmm. That's what kept me sane actually like realizing I had students that I needed to like help out. Yeah. Um, Cause I definitely did feel very invested in their success. So yeah, ther therapy was amazing. I started to see things more clearly. My therapist was like, this is situational. You're actually not gonna be like this for the rest of your life. You are simply dealing with so much more than you ever have. You know, like all of the people that you've spoken to that have hurt you, you haven't had an outlet for it because you've been so busy mm -hmm. addressing everything else in your life. Yeah. You know, like you need to slow down and you need to take time for yourself. You need to realize that other people's mistakes aren't your fault. You can't put the blame in you there. Mm -hmm. It was it was incredibly eye-opening and it it definitely like changed me for the better, but I still haven't been able to shed that level of seriousness that I gained my senior year. Like I'm, I still joke, I still like to keep things light, but there's definitely that little bit of darkness that stays. It's the price of caring. I think so. Like your, your style of caring for things, it means that if I don't take this serious now, mm -hmm. I won't be allowed to take it serious when everything is over and I'm looking back wondering if I really did exactly. everything that I could. Juice, you, you said it so eloquently because I really, I fundamentally live my life in a way that will not allow me to have regrets in the future. So with me right now, um, to like continue my story, like after UMD, I decided not to do pre-med anymore. I realized mm -hmm. that that was actually the source of a lot of my depression. It was that pressure to be a doctor when I wasn't even 100% invested in that career field. I literally just wanted to do it to compete with my brother. Do you mind right? if I ask you a question? Yeah, please. How do you measure whether you're 100% dedicated to something for so, you? Well, I, I, okay, let me answer this this way. Um, yeah. My brother, for example, being a doctor, he knew from the time he was a child mm -hmm. that he wanted to be in that field. He had this little, like, um, stethoscope, like, kitty set, and he would practice on me, like, I would be his little subject, and then um, those are the classes that he focused on as a kid. You know, he would go to, like, places around the world to, like, treat people. He went to, like, an internship in India, he was like the first person to do an internship there at that hospital um and then i copied him you know obviously like he like he was a trailblazer for sure and for me i was always just interested in the glamour of that career path i mean obviously 14 years of school is not glamorous mm -hmm. but being able to tell everyone that you're a doctor when you're like 35 36 that's pretty cool your parents get to brag about you for the rest of your life that's pretty sick. It garners a certain amount of respect. Exactly. Like everyone's like, oh, he's a doctor. Oh my strangers. God, especially if you go to India. Yeah. If you go to India, you go see your family, you go see family friends, they're like, oh, Anand is a doctor. He's that that's Dr. Polari. It's mm -hmm. like that's very that's very cool. Yeah. Um, Anand actually like hates all of that. But it, <laughs> to me that idea was very compelling. Mm -hmm. And I kind of saw it as like a track to fame and success. And essentially I was doing it for all the wrong reasons and it didn't really make sense to pursue something for that reason. Have you ever understood the work that goes into the things that you may want before partaking in the goal? I think so, yes, because of where I am now. Yeah, but prior? Prior, no. Okay. Definitely not. I think I always maybe saw things with like rose colored lenses mm -hmm. or maybe I didn't see them I think as it's okay. I think I it's okay have. to wear both. I think it's okay yeah. to wear both lenses. Like, uh, so for example, when I did pro tryouts for the NFL mm -hmm. for about seven years, between that, the CFL and AFL, mm -hmm. I was always, I loved showing up to the workouts, like pool oh. workouts. I had stress Achilles since 2009 to like present, doing hand cleans out the pool, mm -hmm. finally being able to deadlift from 425 to about 675. 675? Yeah, like getting, wow. just the concept of being able to get stronger with an injury and know that I can further progress my career, mm -hmm. those things excited me. They emboldened you. So Definitely. I measured the amount that I want something by how much does the overall process of everything we're doing excite me? How much are you willing to work for it? And that lets me know whether I'm truly interested in this or not. And if I'm not excited, am I willing to engross myself in the process because the goal speaks that much to me? 
And I think not a lot of people really allow themselves to admit, oh, a lot of this stuff isn't going to be fun. Exactly. I'm, I'm going to have really frustrated days. Oh, I don't, I don't get to accomplish something every day that I step on the field to train. Yeah. Only certain days I accomplish things, but then you also learn, oh, failure is a part of growth. People, and you need that. People want instant gratification. And I'm realizing now where I am currently that that is just not going to work for me. Like right now where I am, where I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, after college, after I like rationalized with myself, I don't want to be a doctor or whatever. I went into consulting thinking, you know, I like public speaking. I like working on projects. This makes sense for me. But even then, I did not feel fulfilled. I yeah. actually kind of felt like a bad person working in those fields at times, um, especially when I worked in the pharmaceutical side. So I finally, like, left consulting for a little bit. I went to India for three months, actually, and just, like, really thought about what I wanted. Was that a nice reset for you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. Being able to embrace your culture. Another thing also is, like, being around people that look just like you is actually very healing sometimes mm -hmm. and you kind of need it as a reset yeah um like i i felt so myself i was dealing with a lot of physical insecurity as well like i always felt a bit ugly <laughs> if that makes sense um and to me that doesn't make sense but keep going i appreciate listening. that so yeah. much and i think it's because i was constantly comparing myself to the people that i've seen you know, around me and, you know, the people I was seeing on Instagram, the people I was seeing on TikTok, um, everyone has lip fillers, everyone has a BBL, mm -hmm. you know, everyone looks good, right? Yeah. Like I was, I was dealing with a lot. But um, the other side of that is after you get the BBL, you have to do a lot of maintenance work for, oh, hell yeah. which is what we don't see. I it's never like, get a BBL. I, yeah. So yeah. I don't have Even to worry about that. Even for the lip that. fillers too, there's a certain amount of maintenance that goes into that. Dep so I will say when I got back from India and I mm -hmm. saw I saw people with lip fillers again for the first time. I was like, what the hell is that? It, it's Because you do not see people like that in yeah. India. But it was really nice. I was by the beach a lot. And mm -hmm. I think like that is extremely restorative. Just being, being around water, water yeah. is so healing. Yeah. It's transformative for sure. So I got back and I was actually still really chilling for a while just because where I had ended up in the years after my undergrad, they were so like accelerated. Like I got pretty far pretty quickly that I felt like I could take some time to myself. Um, that's around when I met Matt. I I did not expect to meet my life partner in that mm -hmm. time. I was actually actively not looking mm -hmm. to date in that time. And that's when I came across him. Yeah, that's so, usually when they find you. Exactly. And yeah. it's been amazing. He His support is what lights a fire in me. Okay. Like it's Without him, I have I would not have come to any of these conclusions. I would not have made these drastic life changes. Like I I started to get back into art, and I as like a STEM major and like a consultant, like I was like, I can't do art. I am type A. I'm left brained. Like I suck at art. I suck at painting. I suck at drawing. Like I suck at all of these things. But I thought back to when I was a kid. I. I found some things at home and it was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I wrote an artist because when I was like six, seven, I loved making like beaded necklaces. I loved using watercolors. Um, I remember one of my family friends, she was like an artist from Philadelphia. She was an art teacher. She gave me a bunch of like colored pencils and stuff. And I wore those down. I was using those all the time. So when I got to this period in like 2023 when I was still kind of finding my footing in terms of what I wanted for myself that that level of art that I was doing whether it was just like putting colors on paper or maybe doing like zen tangles if you've heard of those um it became like a cathartic release for me almost sort of meditative um that kind of expanded into getting into like hand embroidery which is amazing for anxiety because your hands are constantly moving okay so you're talking about embroidery purely by hand yeah so you get like a little um i forgot what it's called like a little ring and then you mm -hmm. put some fabric in between and then you yeah, just go you just, up and down yeah and you learn like different stitch types etc um you know how to knit no i, I really should learn though because i, I want to I learn how to knit knit or crochet yeah, like that'd be sick because i want to actually do interviews while knitting with someone and we knit together exactly because you yeah. can really focus on what you're talking about and just like yeah turn it out um but yeah so then as I was like experimenting more with art and more with these like hobbies that really made me feel grounded, mm -hmm. that's when I could start affording to think about, 
um, like more so what I wanted out of career that was maybe completely different from the path that I'd initially thought of. Yeah. So I was thinking consulting. When I went to India, I was like, I don't know if I wanted to be a consultant still. So mm -hmm. I started thinking about like maybe doing education, maybe doing like healthcare, things that were like consulting adjacent. Yeah. And then I realized that actually quite literally my favorite thing to do is put makeup on mm. and put skincare on. Mm -hmm. And not only that, it's to combine that level of teaching that I told you about before, Yeah. combine it with education and do beauty education, skincare education. So I started looking into that. Oh my God, there are education manager roles available for so many massive beauty brands, right? Like Fenty, um, everything under Kendo, that's what Fenty is under, um, L'Oreal, like everything, there are education managers for them. And I was like, oh my God, my consulting background is perfect for this education manager role. I could definitely apply. That was foolish. I got rejected over and over again. And I finally talked to like a professional mentor and I was like, I know this is what I want to do. I feel so confident that this is like the field I want to be in. Why am I not getting any leads? I'm networking, I'm applying, what is going on? And she was like, Aparna, like your resume is extremely impressive. I'm not gonna lie to you. But why would any beauty brand take you on as an education manager if you have never worked retail one day in your life? I actually have another observation to make that I didn't hear you mention. Yes, let me know. While you were networking. Have you shown your work? I don't have a portfolio that's on my to-do no, list. No, no, not your portfolio. Oh, but okay. like, Get Home Safe is a showing of my work. I talk mm. to people, I talk about their growth, I talk about their back steps. I work with therapists. I tell their stories and I say, hey, mm -hmm. here's the kind of therapy that they serve. I work with wellness folks. I say, hey, here's what they do. Here's what it will deliver. Here's what we're looking to make a difference in the community. And then I go out and I do events publicly with these people, which is the show of work publicly and mm -hmm. the show of conversation and understanding privately that we're delivering to the people. Gotcha. So for example, do you have a YouTube channel? No, but I do want to make TikToks, and my friend told mm -hmm. me that I need to start. She said, take it for yourself, put yourself out there. Do you have any tutorials? No, but th those are on my list. How many different palettes of makeup do you have that you'd be able to show very simple tutorials for someone that looks like you or feels like you that will exactly. want to hear your voice? So this is all part of like my, my path, right? So mm -hmm. I, I was like... I need to get there. So that was another thing she told me. She was like, yeah. if you're so passionate about this, not only should you work a retail job just to show them that you're willing to start as a beginner to learn, mm -hmm. but you also need to like put yourself out there publicly and like show everyone what you're made of, right? Yeah. Like what will you bring to the table? So my first thing was just getting good at talking about beauty. Mm -hmm. That comes through this retail role at a luxury beauty retailer. That's where I work now. Yeah. That's why I'm like very thankful for my boss for like bringing me into that role mm -hmm. um so i'm on like the end of like month two ish or like maybe month three i don't know somewhere in there and recently my friend from philly she came in and she was like aparna like you have the personality for tiktok you know you talk well like you are fun you might as well just do the stuff right like and just you have put really yourself great little stories in between I, I appreciate that, Juice. That's yeah. really nice. But the thing is, I'm so shy. I think, like, after the pandemic and after, you know, some bad experiences, I've really closed off myself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, like, I'm so worried about hate that I might get, all the people watching. And she was like, why, why does it matter who's watching you? Like, who cares who's watching you? The reason they're watching you is because they're boring. They need something to entertain themselves. Yeah. And you're that entertainment. And so you're already eat for free. Exactly. You are already like, you already have this audience on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like they're watching you for free. You're not even capitalizing on it. Yeah. What is stopping you from just taking to another platform and not caring what anyone thinks? So she kept telling me this month or like this affirmation, take it for yourself take it for yourself all of these opportunities that you want mm -hmm. take it for yourself and we were like driving to union station because i was like dropping her off and she um she saw this guy like jaywalking and he like just made it before the light turned green and he was getting like you know stampeded by cars and she was like 
she was like, see that? He took it for himself. <laughs> and I was like, wow. She did okay. not let it go. No, she did not. But <laughs> because she kept repeating it to me, it, it, it was like ingrained in my head. And I like went to sleep that night, like, take it for myself. Take it for myself. Like, you know, just like realizing like it really is that easy. And all you have to do is start. That is literally all you have to do. So I'll get back to you on that and I'll let you know if I've started in a couple oh, weeks. We're going to talk more because the other thing is you're a planner. So something yeah, that would take so. someone like months to execute literally would take you two hours to write a plan and five days to get the equipment that you need to execute it. Very true. But uh -huh. I'm also the two month person. Like you told me, like, do you have simple palettes that you can use to show tutorials? I have been thinking about that for months now. I have whoa, had an whoa, idea whoa, for whoa, months whoa, whoa, now. Whoa, 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 I just whoa, won't execute whoa, it. I just whoa. won't. We don't need perfectionism. Oh, yeah. but we might. No, no. <laughs> I think people, that's my biggest. People will love yeah. you for your mistakes. I know. I really people, need to accept people that. People will love you for your mistakes. That's what they love you for. That that. Oh, is you the said the wrong crush. word. Oh, here's the right word. Oh, oh, but but yeah. Now there's another video coming. I'm gonna mess some of the words up in that one too. They love it, you for your mistakes. It makes you more authentic for sure. But I cannot yeah. like. You, I mean, you you really call me out on my shit, basically. Like mm -hmm. I, I am afraid of not being perfect and i think that's why i have all of these ideas in this book it's, it's my idea book literally and it has a little light bulb on the on the front i love it mm -hmm. i have pages and pages of, of content ideas of app ideas of like things that i want to bring to life and i think that's why i'm so determined to be a leader because i want to like bring this out i want to manifest it and make it happen mm -hmm. i just i can't bring myself to do it if i don't do it right you know i I just go that's, over that's everything so word, much. Though. That's a heavy word, right? Right changes when it you realize the people, yeah. they don't want right. They don't want perfect. They don't yeah. want high execution. They want effort. My partner and I, one of the conversations I had with her is, now she suffers from endometriosis oh and gosh. fibromyalgia. Right, and that's like, it's the extreme version of it. So there's certain days where it's like crippling pain and tears. So it's very hard for me to watch. But my job is when that stops or it gets better, I say, hey, do you want a sandwich and some chips? Oh. You feel what I'm saying? When she has good days, it's my job to say, no, you don't need to put those dishes in the sink. I got you. It's a simple trip. I could just grab it on my way yeah. up. Um, and I told her the only thing she owes me in this relationship because she agreed to it is effort. I judge you by your effort. Mm. That's it. Not, oh, did you do the thing? Did you try? <laughs> That's it. Exactly. If you tried and it didn't happen, look, I'm always going to understand. But when you stop trying and when I stop trying, that's when the thing that we want, that stops working because Definitely. we no longer know how to try. And when you stop trying, you know what that is? That's practice. You've practiced not trying and that's why mm -hmm. the thing doesn't work anymore. Yeah. That's... That's a really good way to look at it because like Matt does the same thing for me where he'll like pick up when mm -hmm. I when I can't like because so he works remotely and I obviously work in a store and I'm on my feet constantly you know how it is as a bouncer you probably do the same thing right yeah. and when you get home like you just want to kick your feet up lay down like maybe eat something if I don't eat I'm hangry um so like for him to like come in and do that for me it's it's incredible right but I also need to like show up for him that way. And we've spoken about that before because a partnership is only 100% when you're both yeah. putting in, in that effort, right? Yeah, the most so. you're gonna get is harmony, not balance. So that's why like, he's always so encouraging. He's like, Aparna, did you post that TikTok you were thinking about posting? And I'm like, no, you know, not have gotten around to that yet. <laughs> not the no while looking at the floor, no. Yeah, maybe, maybe tomorrow. But so do you have, um steps towards it i know i know we're focusing a lot on it but no i this appreciate is, that though because it help it helps me to talk out loud and you're a great is, person to talk out loud thank you i appreciate that yeah. this is the thing that's closest to your current passion because also another rule in my relationship is i have to be able to love you if you wake up as someone else like you can't you can't always be the well when we met you were this that's dangerous oh, <laughs> do absolutely. i do we i are... do i like you enough that if yeah. you are someone else today 
I can make space for that person. Yeah, we are fluid. You know, the only yeah. constant in life is change. Yeah, so. yeah. And when it comes to what you're doing, I I look at it as everything as a workout, mm -hmm. whether it's me editing the videos, doing sit down with folks, mm -hmm. lining up the interviews. I didn't hit you with a follow up interview because it's two of you. And I was like, if something changed, they will let me know. Mm -hmm. Cool. My other person that I interviewed before you guys came, like an hour before you pulled up, oh, really? I hit them up last night and I said, hey, you coming through? They said, all right, I got you. I said, bet, perfect, that's yeah. it. Because I knew there may be pushback, so there's certain people you have to hit up early and there's certain people that's like, look, if things don't work out, they'll let you know. You had the follow-up text, hey, are we still good? I said, yeah, no, I got you, cameras are set up. Cool, if you guys would've canceled, they'd be like, okay, cool, I'm gonna go to the gym and keep it moving, that's it. Exactly. Because like. I shouldn't make time to take things personal when everyone's life moves at a different pace. That's that's actually so poetic too because I feel like I've had certain friendships that have just almost fizzled out because people can't understand that life just gets busy sometimes. Yeah. And I'm a very low maintenance friend. I'm like I, I have this one friend, Mohammed. He is a friend of mine from my hometown and he actually recently moved to Chicago, I think like last year. And we go months without seeing each other. We've actually gotten a year without seeing each other. And his friendship is incredible because when we get back together, when we get dinner and we talk, it picks up like it hasn't left off, right? Um, or it picks up where I left off. So we just chat, we catch up, we talk about things that, you know, normal friends would. And we, we have deep conversations and we part ways and Things are fine, we check in with each other here and there. We get back together again after a couple months, the same thing happens. And those are like the most ideal friendships to me because there are no expectations and you can just be authentically yourself. But I've had, I've had people in the past who have been like, you couldn't respond to my text. And it's like, whoa, dude, like I have finals. <laughs> like I have exams, I have all these things going on. Um, of course, I couldn't reply to your text, but I wanted to give you the time of day, right? I wanted to be yeah. present in that conversation. I could fire off a quick, like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, but I don't know. I'm also a big phone call person. I mm -hmm. like I like phone calls to keep in touch. And I, was, and I was sending you the text in the middle of you calling, and I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not answering because I sent the text, but then I was like, what if they're a phone call person? All right, I'll answer the phone call. Oh, I felt so... I did see that you texted. Um, I saw it after I hung up, and then I was like, wow, you're I feel good. so, you're so good. dumb. You no, just no, you're good. Us. You're good. Because I was like, personality-wise, there's certain people who they don't call, they don't text, but they're great at email. And it's like, oh, I hate emails. I hate checking my emails. I don't want to see what's in there. I have a, how, have a good idea of what's in there. How are you so good at working with any type of person like you you like mask i think like whatever their energy is you kind of mm -hmm. you, you match oh, meet it them, meet them halfway yeah like, um how I do think you just I, live your life like that i think i do a good job of understanding or giving people to teach me who they are because folks are going to show you who they are yeah. the question is are you willing to really sit down and take notes but do you ever feel like you're taking like a back seat to your your own needs or hell ones? no hell no i no. Because there's like that line no between way. between meeting people halfway nah. and people pleasing, and nah. like I don't people gotta... please. I'm really not the greatest people pleaser mm -hmm. at all. I'll I'll do things for others or go out of my way every now and then mm -hmm. if I feel you know this person's looked out for me before or they're on hard times right now. So let me do what I can. Mm -hmm. But I'm very good with no, you got me messed up. This isn't going to work. Yeah. Or that's not how you treat your friends. And if you tell me I'm your friend and this is how I'm treated, I don't want your brand of friendship in my life. Yeah, no. Nah. Because there's there's only one of me to go around. Like I like, went through a situation like that recently. Like, look at, look at, look at this. You know how long this took to set up? Putting up all this yeah, art, this getting awesome. all this equipment getting all these lights running all these cameras look how beautiful it, this is thank you you know how many youtube videos i had to watch to make sure hey are we getting this correct mm -hmm. or getting the angle on a person making sure hey they have this angle that angle this angle why are we <laughs> doing all these angles this light okay that's a great why light, is though. the door closed how's the sound gonna oh how much does this cost it's like no i'm i'm one person and in terms of being someone that 
runs the company when it comes to get home safe and does the interviews between mental health monday housekeeping which is a new series we're working on and the in my shoes which is also a new series that we're working on mm -hmm. i don't really have time to have people around me that i don't feel are and i don't want to say worth my time because i don't want to devalue someone's worth yeah. but like these people if i let them in they do impact me in some kind of way and it should be a positive impact yeah yeah and why would i waste my time letting someone waste my time yeah that's so matt and i had a very candid conversation about something like that recently where yeah. um actually we this has been like somewhat upsetting we are no longer friends with the person who actually introduced us mm -hmm. and it was Oh, you you guys lost the glue, the glue person. You, uh, not not, not for your relationship, just you guys met through exactly, that person. Exactly, and yeah. I I have always been so thankful to her for being the reason that I found my person, mm -hmm. right? But the the situation was so petty. It was so dumb. It was like inconsequential high school drama type BS. And I remember like reaching out to her um, for something and she didn't respond, but she did do something extremely cruel and insensitive afterwards. Uh, um, I, I don't know if I should like, get into the details because the details would make more sense. If, if you're comfortable, it's up to you. Okay, so here, here's what happened. We um, have been friends for 12 years, like mm -hmm. long time friends, I think since seventh grade or eighth grade. That's ironically, because I just dropped a episode two days ago called 12 mm -hmm. Years of Therapy. Dang, okay. Yeah, one of my boys is in therapy for 12 years. Good friend, though. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was awesome. impressed. And I was like, 12 years. I was like, wow, that's the title. That's amazing. Yeah, 12 years. Yeah. Ago, for sure. So, yeah, we had been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I went to, you know, middle school and high school with her. Uh, Matthew, my partner, he went to college with this girl's uh, boyfriend at the time. And, you know, like, we... Matt and I, we met at Melting Pot in Gaithersburg because it was her birthday. She, like, introduced us, I guess, and we, like, shot, chat. We did not chat. <laughs> 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 we, we sat well. sharing the same pot of broth, and I would, you know, ask him, I'd be like, oh, like, are you okay with this flavor? And he'd be like, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, can you talk? And he'd be like, yeah. <laughs> he, he wasn't really talking to me. So I was making the executive decisions there. Um, and at one point, the girl's boyfriend, the birthday girl's boyfriend, came and sat in between us. And she, he was, like, uh, talking to me about, like, movies, TV shows, whatever. And he was like, Parna, like, I need to get your number so we can talk more about this. Oh, wait, my phone's dead. Get his number instead. And Matt was like, no. <laughs> I think he was just shy. The face that you made was his face in that moment because I've seen him say no like that. Yeah, exactly. I've got, I've got it down. Um, and so that was like, I was like, okay, whatever. And I asked him, I was like, do you want to go come to DC? Because I'm going back to my place. I'm going out. And he was like, no, like not again. Um, and then he told me later, like, I just, he was like, I sat in my car and I was hitting myself for not getting your number. Um, and I was like, okay, yeah, sure. He, did not, he didn't just not get your number. He also said, no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, like a month later, uh -huh. um, my friend, she had a game night and Matt and I, got together then and we were like chatting finally he was like talking to me i guess like the liquor helped mm -hmm. <laughs> um and we got really close very quickly and we have been inseparable since that game night like we had our first date officially a couple weeks later mm -hmm. um but we got into a relationship very quickly because like when you know you know and yeah we've just like strengthened our relationship since then um so a few weeks after we started dating, we went to Top Golf in Ashburn mm -hmm. with the same friend group who was at game night, who was at the birthday dinner. Yeah. And this like, th this was in Ashburn. My friend, who was the birthday girl, who like introduced us, she lived in Maryland. So Annapolis to Ashburn, that's over two hours. If you're talking a weekday with traffic, yeah, that's like you're like not making it, right? You yeah. wouldn't even want to come. It's wild. So we ended up having top golf, and I did not invite her, mm -hmm. thinking she would not make the trip. She was furious. 
Okay, and I understand because she told me, she was like, I felt very excluded. You know, this is after she like ignored me for like a week and had very cold responses. She finally opened up and was like, I was excluded a lot in my childhood. I am very sensitive to these things. It makes me very upset to be excluded. And I said, you know what? I understand because even if you weren't gonna come and you weren't gonna come right, it was very far. She was like, yeah. I was like, even if you weren't gonna come, you want to know that you were wanted there. You want to be invited, right? Mm -hmm. You want to know that we were thinking of you. I understand that. And I told her, I was like, I'm never going to do that to you again. Because now that I know how much that hurts you, I never want you to feel left out. Yeah. So fast did forward. You, did you ever explain to her, though, that you wanted to be considerate of the distance that oh, she would be traveling? Absolutely. And that you didn't want to put her in that position, but you can absolutely. see where she's coming from? But she told me, she said, I completely understand that, but you also need to just let me make that decision for myself. Cool. And I said, you're absolutely right, girl. Yeah. Like, that's very true. I, yeah. I should not have made that decision for you. Uh -huh. You might have been like, yeah, I will actually drive the two and a half hours to see my friends. And then what happened next? Yeah, so fast forward to... <laughs> I'm sorry. The way you just said, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now so short-lived. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to November. Yeah. She um, texted me some news that I wasn't expecting. And I understood but i wasn't happy with the delivery so you so you you told me earlier that you let people teach you what they're like right so one thing that i teach other people is that communication is extremely important to me yeah. and also more so than that depending on our relationship sometimes that communication needs to be face to face or over the phone especially for difficult information that you want to like transmit to that and person. this was a difficult thing Exactly. It was yeah. something that I wasn't expecting, something that actually did make me very sad. Mm -hmm. And I responded to her. Um, oh, the end of her text was like, I really hope you can understand, though. And I said, hey, I understand. But why didn't you call me? Yeah. You know, because like the tone of her text, it read very poorly. Mm -hmm. It also made me seem like I was going to be difficult. And that actually kind of made me difficult because I was like, as your friend of over a decade, why couldn't you like take the time to just tell me about this, you know, face to face? And she was like, you know, I was so nervous about this. I actually drafted this text with my therapist and she's one of those per those people that is always using therapy speak. Like I'm an empath, you know, like that person is gaslighting me. Like it's always very therapy speaky. And I, I love therapy. It has helped me immensely, but to always be the victim is not entirely accurate. Right. Yeah. So that that this is where I got a little ticked off because I was like, I was like, I've been your friend for 12 years. Like, you do not need to have a ghostwriter mm -hmm. writing this. Plus, your therapist didn't even like write this in a way that would resonate with me. Right. It just ended up hurting me a lot. Yeah. Um, and she was very upset, which now shifted the feeling. Exactly. And there was um, a component that involved Matt and Matt being my partner mm -hmm. ended up taking my side and not the couples um you know it okay to be very honest it was essentially the girl saying uh i would not be her bridesmaid which is fine i understand that um i i think people here in the west are like very particular about weddings i'm being like we are i i haven't really thought about my wedding a lot so yeah. i don't know yeah. the like planning that goes into it so to me it was more just like feeling hurt because as the person who introduced me to my partner, she would be like my maid of honor, right? Um, so I was like, oh, like, I'm not gonna be in her wedding party, which is fine, because the people that she picked were all five people that should be ahead, ahead of me. The issue was that they were gonna ask Matt to be in the groom's party, and Matt, being a very loyal partner to me, said, I do not feel comfortable being up there, seeing my, my partner in the crowd, especially when I know that she is closer with the woman that I am with the man. And also originally you were supposed to be a part of it and that changes everything. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so they ended up having like five and five, which is totally good. The guy doesn't um, have as many people in his party as the girl would have wanted. Mm -hmm. So I understood. Yeah. And the next day I did call her or she called me and I picked up and I immediately just said, I am so sorry for how I reacted last night because you did, this is where I'm a little empathetic. I, I said, you did what you felt was right. You tried not to hurt me. You did that through a text. I would have preferred a call, but if you did that knowing that that's how you thought you would handle it best, 
I empathize with that and I understand. <sighs> and I just she went to five tables in my head. But yeah, keep going. I know. Keep going. But I sometimes I like to pick a relationship over my ego. I like to value a person over my own feelings. That's just how I was raised, kind of. But she so she also apologized. She said, you know what, Aparna, like I should have called you. You would have liked that. And I was like, well, thank you for saying that. That's really nice. And then I thought, okay, we're good. We've, we've like reasoned it out. And she goes, now that we've gotten the apologies out of the way, I just want to know why the fuck you think it was okay for like cutting Matt out of the group's party. Like it is our wedding. Like I was like, whoa, hold, do not yell at me. That's one thing I cannot handle. Please don't yell at me. Like bring, bring your voice down. I'm not yelling at you. Um, and I was like, we made that decision together. I'm sorry, it should not have come from me, but we were just letting you know to get ahead of it because he's obviously not gonna do that to me, right? Like, his partnership with me is That's more important man. to both of us. That's my man. That's my man. That's my man. <laughs> um, and she was just like so angry at me and I had to keep telling her like, bring it down a notch, like it's okay. And I finally said, okay, this is getting really intense, obviously, the emotions are high on both sides. Uh, she told me that she felt that I was very full of myself and only interested in my own interests. I said, you know, it's interesting because I feel very similar about you. And I understand why you feel that way about me, but understand that I feel the same way about you. I just keep, I hear I hear the insults of what you should be saying and the responsible <laughs> parts that you keep saying, I but cannot. like, I'm gonna let you cook. I'm gonna let no, you cook. No, because I, I don't, I don't want to hurt anyone ever. That's It's not about hurting it anybody though. It's about, you not hurting someone doesn't mean you become a punching bag exactly. or you become so the I shocker was, that absorbs things. I was very honest with her. I said, we cannot yeah. continue this conversation if you continue speaking to me this way. And I finally said, you know, like our emotions are so high. Let's just take a step back. We've been friends for years. We have talked in detail about the best way that her and I can address conflict. And funnily enough, it was over phone call, which all of this could have been prevented if she had just, you know, Mid called me. Call, yeah. um, but whatever, that wasn't and the also point. also clarity. Exactly. And yeah. tone, like all of that is so important, Instead especially with women. Instead of jumping to assumptions, you know, things like second this. time somebody jumped to an assumption in one of your stores. Exactly. So all of that is very important. And I was just like, why don't we just take a step back? She took that as me ending the friendship, which I did not know. I, I did not know that. Um, anyway, this is around Thanksgiving. We should pause here. What you saw in that blow up was something that was building up for a while that had nothing to do with just the wedding. Yeah, it, maybe. That it's too personal. It's too much. Well, There's you know not, what I think it is. I think she up? felt entitled because she had introduced me to uh -huh. Matt, and she didn't feel like together we could dictate what we do as a partnership because our partnership was only formed through their good graces. Mm -hmm. That's what I think it is. That's why I think the personal component comes from. Yeah. Um, I, in two to three parts of the story that you told me that involve her and you, there's too much anger. And the reason I say there's too much anger, when you, when you know someone long enough, there's going to be anger there, whether you guys acknowledge it or not, yeah. or just discomfort, right? But the thing is, you've had the right conversations, but no matter what you said, your right conversation for her is never gonna be good enough for what she's going through. Exactly, and we just do not see eye to eye that way. Yeah. And for the and majority of our friendship- You guys maybe grew apart. I think that's what it is. Cause yeah. We, we talked about that too, because we actually got closer when Matt and I started dating, because we were seeing each other so much more often than we would have just because she does live far away. And you guys, um, that, that habit, you practiced of seeing each other, talking to each other, kikiing with each other, mm -hmm. being there for each other, there's less of that. And she may have started to look at the room and say, well, why do I get less now that she finally got what she wanted? I'd still Maybe. need my friend. I don't even know how to like rationalize it, but yeah. regardless, like essentially what happened after that is what hurt me the most and what made me cut off the friendship. More. Yes. Oh. One one last part and then we're, you gotta we're flip done a with table. This. You gotta flip a table, man. I'm just I'm saying. I'm not a table flipper. I'm more just, it's it's all in here and that's, it, what, that's what sucks. And, or in my journal. Um, table I'll, I'll think about it um well the, the reason case. that i don't want to the table is because i no, feel no, so it. calm in my people are for washing sneakers oh. on it yeah you oh. don't need to touch that um so the last part of this uh -huh. um 
This was all around Thanksgiving, and mm -hmm. my good. friend group every year, Blacksgiving, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, for we all hands. go out. Oh, for the, from the yeah. table. Thank yeah. you, I appreciate that. No problem. So we go out to right um, downtown Bethesda. You know, uh -huh. Have you heard of Tommy Joe's? Yeah. Yeah, so we go to Tommy Joe's every single year. We've done that, I don't know, since we were in college, maybe, maybe since we had, um, I don't know, maybe a senior year, I don't know. Doesn't matter. It's just been a long standing tradition that my friend group and I, we do. And I, this all happened that week, which was so annoying. And I actually reached out to Maddie and I said, hey, like, I sent her a really kind text. Okay, wait, can I, I want to say that again because I don't want to use her name. Um, did you use her name? Yeah, I did. I didn't even peep it. But yeah, keep going. Yeah. Um, so I reached out to my friend like really kindly and- Okay, I know the timestamp, I got you. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, so I reached out to my friend really kindly and I said, I know that we're like having some difficulties in our friendship. Mm -hmm. That being said, I still, like you're my friend. I still would love to see you for our tradition. Can we just put things aside for tonight or like for tomorrow night so we can have a good time with our friends? We've been doing this for 10 years. And the reason I said this is because earlier when there was a different girl in this friend group and they had trouble, um, my friend was like, why couldn't she just put it aside for the good of the group, right? So here's what happened after that. Mm -hmm. I don't get a response from my friend. Yeah. So I text my guy friend and I say, hey, are we still on for Black Skiving? Mm -hmm. um, and he goes, yeah, I think so. I'm going to text the group chat. So he texts the group chat, yo, what's up? What's going on with like our plans this week? And I, I respond like, hey, yeah, like I really want to hang out with everyone. What's, what's the deal? And half an hour later, my guy friend responds to me personally and goes, what is up with all these group chats? I go, what group chat? I only have the one. And he goes, oh shit, yeah. I see that you're not in this one. Oh and I'm no. Like, I'm like, what? So the, oh, girl, about this. the girl had apparently started a new group chat without me, which alerted everyone to the fact that we were in an argument so people were messaging me like, what did you do? Because I had also found out that she had talked shit about me to ev like everyone in our friend group. So everyone was upset at me. They were okay with me being left out. I didn't take the time to clear my name. How many people are in this chat? This was like maybe 10. It's like my high school friends. And nobody ever reached out to you to clarify things? No, Everyone they did. They, they were just like, they is. were like, why? Are, first, they were like, why are you not in this group chat? But mm -hmm. then the people that she had spoke to were like, I'm not really on your side for this. And I'm like, are you even going to give me a chance to like talk? Or are no. we just going to make assumptions? You just you just lost some really bad friends. That's I, all. I That's think all so. That and, you know, I called one of the guy friends because Maddie, when Matt had called her, shit. Okay. I called one of my guy friends because when my friend. <laughs> Uh, answered the phone when Matt called. Mm -hmm. Matt called her and she picked up for his call. She didn't pick up mine. Mm -hmm. She said that she had not created the group chat, that someone else had. So that's the person I called and I said, why did you do that to me, dude? Like, why did you leave me out of this? And he goes, I'm checking the group chat now. I didn't create any of this. She specifically did, but what you did was wrong. And I said, okay, let me tell you my side. And he was like, oh, you know, yeah, we didn't really see it that way. No, no, no. Yeah, because no, you never do, no, right? Until the no. person. It's, no, it was it's too so late now. frustrating. It was too frustrating. Not only, not only have y'all chosen sides, I had to twist your arm to clear my name. And that exactly. means in life, something else may happen to me. And it's like... I can't count on these people. Do I want people to be around me who just doubt my integrity after everything and every person I've been for them in life? Exactly. No. No, I don't. I'm, I'm just going to let myself out. That's usually so, all that is. I... I won't completely cut those friends off because... I hear you. But I definitely do want to distance myself from them. Yeah. But what made me so upset is that even after scolding me for excluding her all those months prior, she weaponized her insecurity to hurt me. Yeah, she did a great job. And she did a great she job of that. She did a great job. That's, that's I phenomenal. I was very hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I was like... But I was more shocked and betrayed by what had happened. Mm -hmm. And that made me realize... You could introduce me to to my partner. You could be my friend for 12 years. But if you're going to do petty shit like this, 
I don't want you in my life and I want you far away from me. Yeah. So yeah. she got blocked on everything. Matt blocked her on everything. And, and we don't talk to people like that. It's the amount of effort though. That's that's a lot of effort. Separate group chats, five conversations. You have to think to be that cruel. Like you yeah. have to like actively think and, to and be like that. That also means that she doesn't forgive and she doesn't forget, but she also twists around the truth. Anytime I tell yeah. a story about me and someone falling out, I usually try to paint that person's experience as honest as possible. Objectively. Because I do I, another one of my rules, which I don't I don't say my rules out loud a lot, but it's like what I've come to realize is when people fall out with me, it is my fault as much as it is, oh, it is their fault. Yes. But I'm only responsible for my part of the relationship exactly. and I let them handle the rest. I shouldn't be guilty for what they want to do exactly. with what has happened between the both of us. It's So one thing that I learned in therapy is that you should always give someone a choice, mm -hmm. right? My therapist was like, ultimatums are awful because you just take away that person's ability to make a choice. Yeah. So I knew that I could make a choice she could make a choice, but essentially, like, I have to live with the person in my head, right? I have to do what's in accordance with what I believe in, what my values are, what my boundaries are. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all of this is making me feel like a bad person. Um, not, let me say that again. All of these are making me feel badly about myself, right? I'm inflicting pain upon myself by continuing to hang out with a person who doesn't respect me, who doesn't respect my friendships because she wanted to tell people that are mutually invested in both of us, right? Like all of this just contributed to some clarity that I had and upon cutting her off, Matt doing the same because she yelled at Matt too. And that, that is like yeah. not okay with me. Yeah. I'm very protective of my partner. He's protective of me. We, re we had a candid conversation with each other. Him and I said that even though she did bring us together, we won't let her make us grow apart, right? And that might mean cutting off this friendship. And I don't want Matt to not be friends with her fiance anymore now that you know they're getting married and stuff, but mm -hmm. obviously I would want them as a partnership to stay by each other's side as well. So it's made things like very awkward for our friend group, but I still feel confident in the choices that Matt and I made. You guys and, made the right decision. And, that's and what the boundaries I'll say. that we've set. Yeah. So. This part, because okay. like, yeah. that's a hell of a story you told. I am so sorry to happen to both of you. That I, sucks. I know. It's just especially hard because the person that you've kind of grown up with, yeah. losing that person. Yeah, but that's not fun. Matt and I did talk where like, we might just be the type to keep our circle small. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's, that's okay. perfectly fine. That's okay. That's where joy comes from. Exactly. 